welcome to a wonderful episode of Journey of an Entrepreneur, where I bring on a guest from a different industry from all over the world. Today's guest is going to be speaking to us about the importance of sharing your story, how you can help leave an impact with others, and we're just going to get a little bit more deeper. So without further ado, I'm going to let her introduce herself, as I believe in my heart she's amazing and phenomenal. We have Gigi here, Sabbath, and so thank you so much for joining us tonight. And so some of the things that you do before you even go into it, you're a motivational keynote speaker, you're a CEO and founder of a wonderful organization, you have all of these books that have done so well for you and Les Brown even supported and said, you need to be reading these books. So Gigi, tell us, when did the love for writing come about in your life? Well, I've always been a writer. I've always loved to write, but now if you told me that I would launch a book, I'd tell you really. And I, I, I'd say, are, are you serious? And so I'm just grateful for, for the books that have been done. And I'm grateful for the publishing team for, for bringing that to, to the surface. But essentially, some of the things that were mentioned in there, I could not foresee occurring. And so again, I'm just grateful to be here. As you know, I am a survivor of domestic violence and sexual assault and those things I did not foresee. So if you told me that would be a part of my books that I've written, if you had told me then when I was younger that this would be, I would tell you really, because here's the thing, I was sexually assaulted when I was eight years old and I took all the precautions that you could possibly think of, let alone did I ever know that I would share that story as well. But here's the thing, I'll never forget that an individual once told me that you need to share your story, it may help someone. And for me, that was enough to come forward with not just what happened as an adult, but also what happened as a child. And, it, and we, we know that we think, oh, this only happens for adults, like you said, adults, but it's not. So before you moved here, because I actually know a little bit of your story, you were brought, born and raised in Haiti. And what was life like in Haiti? So my parents, they were actually born in Haiti. I was born in Coral Springs, Florida. Back then, no one knew what Co Coral Springs was. So you say Miami, they say, oh, OK, I'm familiar with the area. OK, get, I got it. Nowadays, you mentioned Coral Springs, folks are more familiar with it just because of changes in our society. And so I was born in Coral Springs, Florida. Ah, okay. Yes, I do know where Coral Springs is because I lived in Miami and I did go to FIU. So I'm aware of all the places in the city. And yes, Dan, it's been a long time since I've seen you. So for you, domestic, you know, let's go back to the domestic violence and sexual assault. If you can just share a little, I know when you were, you said you were young when this happened, but for you, what was the biggest takeaway that you now use and share with others to help them get through what they're going through? You mentioned domestic violence and then you also mentioned sexual assault. So sexual assault occurred when I was eight years old and again, as an adult, and then domestic violence also happened as an adult while in law school. And so- these instances, how have they helped you with helping other people? And so essentially for me, it's understanding what I went through, how I overcame it, and also helping others understand that they too can do the same and understanding the importance of having God first in their lives. And so it's so important, not just to have God first in our personal lives, but all areas in our businesses, in our relationships and understanding that God wants to be a part of all areas. Right. God is a big proponent in all of our areas. I mean, if you think about it, he's working right now in the background for our finances. He's working right now in the background for our business to be successful. And even though right now we don't see it, but it's actually happening. So moving on to story writing, crafting your story, it takes a certain skill set. And so what do you keep in mind when you're crafting a story that you're about to put into a book to have others read? Here's what I'll tell, tell, tell your audience today. If you're listening to this message, write this down. Be you. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. And so when you have the pen 
or the pencil in your hand. I, I happen to have them. when you have the pen or the pencil in your hand, and as you're writing, let go and let God speak from the heart, and then let your let let go and let God mind and heart. That was pretty powerful. Let go and let God take over. Because sometimes we don't want to do that. But that's actually what needs to happen. Now, Robert has a question for you. What is the best tip you can give someone to avoid these situations or to stop them before they get out of hand? And he's talking about the sexual assault or even the domestic violence. Great question, Robert. I'd say to definitely focus in on those signs and the red flags. And so essentially, and I'm such a strong advocate for both topics as well as other topics, because here's the thing, we need to be teaching folks the red flags and, and the signs to look out for early on to prevent these type of things from happening. And so I wish that I was aware of those things, you see? And so the situation could have been avoided for sure. I look back, had, had I known those things, they could have been avoided for sure. And so that's why I'm so strong about educating others about it, because I do believe that they can be. this could be prevented. Domestic violence can be prevented. Sexual assault can be prevented. But here's the thing, also too, keeping in mind, I took all the precautions you could possibly think of after I was sexually assaulted as an eight-year-old Mind you, it happened again as an adult. I was taken. That's out of my control. So understanding that you have to be very cautious of your surroundings. And so, Robert, I'll definitely tell you and, and the other listeners today, be cautious of your surroundings. If you're aware of some sort of behavior that should not be occurring, contact the proper authorities, contact 911. And also, too, if, if you're aware someone is in a domestic violence relationship or you're aware and of the signs and you are educated about it, let them know. Don't be afraid to let folks know. You are in danger. You are in danger. When it comes to the signs, what are some typical signs that we tend to ignore? Because this is one that Robert was asking, but I'm going to actually tie them in together. Like, what's a red sign or red flag that we tend to ignore? Great question. So referring to domestic violence, you're looking for someone with a controlling behavior, manipulation, or the umbrella being a narcissistic character trait. Gaslighting. I know that that's also a big one too. And so why do we ignore these signs now when we know that they're there? I would highly suggest not to ignore those signs because those are huge signs that you're in danger. And also too, if you've been through that situation and you're now depressed or you have anxiety, you think that there is no hope that, that you cannot get through this. I'm here to tell you that you can get through this. You're not alone. We, we support you and that God is with you wherever you go. One of my favorite verses is Joshua 1, 9. Haven't I commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid or discouraged for your Lord, your God is with you wherever you go, understanding that he's with you wherever you go. And then also too, it's so important to forgive. The Bible says, Father, please forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And so you forgive and you move forward. Make sure you heard that correctly. Rewind. Make sure you so that you can move forward absolutely absolutely like it's e I mean, at least in my experience why I did I ignore the signs I was in love and I was just like okay this is going to get better but it didn't and so it's the same it starts off small it starts off with the small things that escalate to bigger things so like Gigi was saying don't ignore the signs you don't, they do escalate. There's, if you put yourself in the situation, let's say you, you are in the situation, what is something you can do to get out? I would say definitely contact the proper authorities, co communicate with your family and friends. And, and one of my good friends, she's also a domestic survivor and advocate. My goodness, bless her heart. She, and she was on my show and she talked about an exit plan and I love it. Have an exit plan. Why is the exit plan so powerful? Because you understand that you are now leaving an abusive relationship. You're cautious. And now you've told this person, I am leaving. 
this is not suitable for me. Or if you have children, this is not suitable for the children. And also too, a good friend of mine talks about leaving because of your children, leaving because your children are in danger. So some folks have it the other way around. They say, well, I'm staying in this relationship because of the children. It's true. You know, for a long time when Savina's father was there in the picture, it was, I was like, okay, how can I do this? But then I realized, no, this is not what I want for her or I, because if it was on to me, who knows what could happen to her? And also what an example am I setting? So it was an exit. There was, <laughs> it was a fast exit strategy, but it happened. <laughs> but I, I know that there are better ways. There's so many networks. Uh, you have an organization, if you could tell us a little bit more about it. Absolutely. Great question. So Life Service Center of America, it has an aspect, it has the coaching, the professional coaching services. It also has the business service navigator that allows our members to locate the services that they need in a reasonable time. Also throughout the year, we host several events on various topics, leadership, business, faith-based topics, the survivor topics. And also I'll never forget, it started off with domestic violence, a topic that I'm a survivor of as well. And God led me to do one on sexual assault and then breast cancer. And I said, God, breast cancer? He said, yes, my child, breast cancer. And so I stepped into it. I stepped into purpose. I understood what he needed me to do. And I, I haven't looked back since I just stepped into it and I'm in tune with purpose. Yes. So Robert has shared, the Bible also says, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my work. So we definitely must put in the work too, just like you are right now. He showed you, hey, this is what I want you to focus on. And then look what happened. You created a beautiful organization from it. So as someone who has published quite a few books and has even gotten accolades from it, I would love to ask you a few questions about when it comes to publishing, what would you suggest to someone to look out for when choosing a company to work with? Great question. Real quick, I want to circle back to what Robert said there about faith, because it's so important to walk by faith and not by sight. I'll say it again, walk by faith, not by sight. And I'll say it again, walk by faith, not by sight. So important. So great job there bringing that up in regards to faith and making sure that you have faith over fear. Now, in regards to publishing and your question in regards to publishing, here's what I'd say when, when, you're, when you're choosing a, a publisher. Make sure that they understand what, what, you're, what you're doing here, making sure that they're in alignment with your morals and your values. There has to be some type of alignment there. I truly believe in that. And so I'm grateful for my publishing company. I'm grateful for my publisher. I'm grateful. There, there is definitely an alignment there. Did you have, did you figure out your goals? Were there like goals that you wrote out before you started working with them or did they help you come up with your goals? I would say that they definitely assisted me through the process step by step. And I'm grateful for their assistance on the journey to writing a book. But as I mentioned earlier, if you told me that I would launch a book, I would tell you, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that it could really happen. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Well, how many, you know what? Let's tell the folks how many books, including your new one, which we'll get into. How many books have you published so far? So far, Let's see. There's been Walk With Me, God First, Overcoming Heart Blocks, uh, and then Healing and Growth, On the Front Lines with Royal Warriors, Impact, and several several books in the series for the David and Goliath book. Oh, look at that. It sounds like it was like 10 books that I have on my fingers. Did I count that wrong? Here's the thing. All of the books are in alignment with the morals and values as well. And understanding that it's all about having God first in our lives and understanding that we are God's servants and understand that we're the children of God and we're called to serve his people. Mm. Let that sit in for a little bit. <laughs> now let's get into your newest book that just launched. Can you tell us what was the story behind the book of writing it and how do we get a copy? 
Great question. So healing and growth, it's a spiritual journey, one that I encourage everyone, including your audience, to take with us. Take the spiritual journey with us and understanding that we know for a fact that you will experience massive transformation. Why? Because we've been there and understanding that God has the ultimate power to heal. Mm -hmm. He does have the um, ultimate power to heal. And Robert's saying, more alignment is important in life, which is true. As we're getting into 2023, where what are you seeing that works for in 2022? And what's in 2023 can help you get more in alignment to your goals. So you are a you know, so you are a publisher. Sorry, not <laughs> I love going live because I have so much on my mind, but it's common to make mistakes and it's common to get befuddled as Russ would say, but I wanted to ask you, so you're a public, uh, you're a writer, you're a CEO and founder, and you're a motivational keynote speaker. So what are some tips for anybody who's thinking about getting into keynote speaking that they should keep in mind? And I know you have a few events coming up next year as to how can they get in front of a crowd they want to start promoting their book or they just want to be able to build more awareness to who they are contact me i def i'd be more than happy to assist you with doing such and also to making sure that you understand god's purpose for your life and oftentimes it's right in front of you and so if he's if he's told you Hey, my child, I need you to write this book. And he's give, he's giving you those tools and those resources to, to do so. And it's right in front of you. And you've written the book. I've had folks come to me. Some of them already have chapter one through 15 or one through five done. And they say, well, I really want to launch this book. And I, I help them along the way with launching. Their, and for most of them, majority have been it's been their first book. And for some folks too, it's it, they're at chapter one and I, I help them navigate through those chapters and really expressing themselves the way they want to and the way they need to in order to get their message across to their readers. And so if you're stuck, and so we call that stuck, right? If you're stuck and you need assistance getting unstuck as you're writing your book, contact me. I can be reached at in, on LinkedIn or Life Service Center of America, LLC.com. I'd be more than happy to assist you. You would speak with one of our agents and then they would direct you to con to speak with me. And so I, I would be more than happy to help you. Absolutely. And tell them about your speaking engagement that you have coming in September. Am I not correct? That it's it's a conference, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The Royal Warriors Conference. And you're a part of the Royal Warriors Conference in Miami, <laughs> correct? Um. I have to check and see. I don't think I am, but we'll talk about that. Yes, ma'am. But yes, <laughs> I mean, hey, it's Jordan. <laughs> not a problem. It's next year. And we encourage you to, to join us for the Royal Warriors Conference. And in an event you do not want to miss, a lot of value will be provided at the event. And so if you wanted to speak, let's say you were saying, you know what? I want to take this opportunity. And I want to speak. Is there an opportunity to speak at the conference? Yes, ma'am. I would definitely suggest to your audience if they're listening today and they're interested in being a speaker to contact me again. Uh, that could be I could be reached on Life Service Center of America, LLC.com. Or also you can contact our support team at support at Life Service Center of America, LLC.com. I'll say it again. Support at Life Service Center of America, LLC.com. And there you have it, everybody. So if you want to get a copy of Gigi's book, go ahead and drop. We'll get we'll, we have the link in the comments so that you can grab a copy of her book or books. Um, just check out also her contact her here on LinkedIn and also take advantage. If you are thinking about getting in, getting in front of a crowd, you want to build awareness to yourself. I would love to help you with live streaming and video, but also you have the opportunity right here to speak on a stage in front of an audience where you can network with others and you have time to put it all together because when is this event again? This one is in September next year, 2023. It's an in-person event, an event you do not want to miss. Reserve it. And so for some of you who are like, wait a minute, that's so far. What were you saying in January of this year? 
And what is today's date? Let me just let me just put that out there. Let me just let that sink in because we're like, oh, but that, but look where we're at. We're in December of 2022, and it was just yesterday. It was January 2022. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to invite you to come and join us on Instagram, where we're going to continue this conversation. And for you to get to know more about Gigi. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined in. Thank you, Gigi, for being here tonight and the extreme patience. And next week, I have a wonderful guest, which you will all will be excited for as well. So until my next live, Gigi, do you have a few words uh, to leave with us before we close for the evening? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. And I leave this for your audience today. If, if you understand God's purpose for your life, or you may, you may not be aware of it. I encourage you to take a moment and self-reflect, pray, get quiet. And once you're aware of God's purpose for your life, step into it. And it's, it's, it's so important to understand that if you have the tools and the resources to help others to do so, and that again, we're, we are the children of God. We're called to serve his people. And if you are in, facing a challenge today and you're not aware of how to get back up or you're unsure of some things and you have a negative mindset, I encourage you to shift your mindset from a negative mindset to a positive mindset and not just maintain a positive mindset, but maintain what is called a resilient mindset. And the resilient mindset is your ability to bounce back after a major challenge has occurred in your life. And so understanding that you are in control of your mind, body, soul, and spirit. And understanding that if you have a goal to write a book, or if, if you have thought that it is impossible, I want to remind you that it is possible all things are possible with God. Don't give up. Keep moving forward no matter what. And keep up the good fight. And if you have given up on a goal because of the difficulty of that goal, I encourage you to circle back to the goal today. Circle back to it. Why? Because I believe in you. I need you to believe in yourself. And I need you to understand that God believes in you. You are the child of God. And if he brought you to it, he will get you through it. And oftentimes he brings you to it for a reason. There is a reason why he led you to that goal or to create what you may have put on hold or off to the shelf. There is a gentleman I spoke with. I give you an example. He wanted to write a book and he wrote a few chapters and for 15 years, if you're listening to this message today, you know who you are if you're here with us today. He put it off for 15 years. 15 years on the bookshelf. And he said, Gigi, I think next year I'm ready to launch the book. He self-reflected and he has officially launched the book. After 15 years, he did it. And guess what? When you launch the book, are we aware of how many years it took you to write the book? No. He launched the book and it's powerful. Thank you. Don't Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for those words of encouragement. So until my next live, which is next week, have a, have a wonderful evening or day wherever you're tuning in. Bye, everybody.